Hello and welcome to our weekly look inside Syria. I'm David Foster. In recent months, much of the focus has been on Syria's chemical weapons and the prospects of peace talks. But with shifting alliances and infighting among opposition factions, the situation is now more complex than ever. Last week, the United States and Britain decided to suspend some non-lethal aid to opposition fighters in northern Syria. They say they're worried it could fall into the hands of extremist groups after Islamist fighters are reported to have taken over bases and warehouses from the Free Syrian Army. With apparent defections on all sides, this leaves the Free Syrian Army increasingly splintered. While the Free Syrian Army, the FSA's influence on the ground was always questionable, now it appears to have hardly any sway at all over the myriad of armed factions. Efforts by the head of the Syrian National Coalition, Ahmad Jaba, to restructure opposition into a national army were never welcomed by many inside Syria, who described it as a Western project. And the European Union says it is becoming increasingly concerned about Europeans going to fight in Syria and joining groups such as Al-Qaeda. Nicole Johnston has more. These men say they're French and that right now they're fighting in Syria for the rebels. It's impossible to know for sure because we can't independently verify the video. However, if they are foreign fighters, they're part of a growing number travelling to Syria to take part in the war. I call on you to join the fight in the blessed land of Syria. My brothers in France and Europe, jihad in Syria is an obligation. European Union ministers are worried about people going to Syria to fight and then bringing the war back home to Europe. In the beginning in Syria, you had very few radical groups. Then Al-Qaeda came from Iraq. And now you have territories that are really dominated and controlled by Al-Qaeda. They have their own territory right at the doorstep of Turkey, so not too far from Europe. And they, of course, have fighters who come from North Africa and the European Union. Obviously, this creates a relatively serious security problem because we have to anticipate their return and how to handle this. However, some analysts say the threat isn't as serious as the European Union is making out. It's over-exaggerated. No doubt that from Germany, from France, from other countries, you have motivated young men who are willing to go and, and uh, fight for the, for the cause, if you would like, in Syria. There are reports the number of rebel fighters from 11 Western European countries has nearly doubled in the past six months. The Belgium government estimates up to 2,000 are from the European Union. The French government says there's more than 180 from France. And Britain's domestic spy agency, MI5, says there are hundreds of people from the UK joining the fight in Syria. Some of them have climbed through the ranks. Like this man. He's an ethnic Chechen from Georgia and a former Georgian intelligence officer. Now he's a senior commander in a group called the Islamic State of Iraq and Al-Sham. There's also reports estimating that 500 people from the Balkans, including Bosnia and Kosovo, are there too. As the war spills over into neighbouring countries like Lebanon, the rise of foreign fighters is a dangerous development. And it's likely to only make things worse. Nicole Johnston for Inside Syria. Well, joining us now from Antakya in Turkey, General Salim Idris, Chief of Staff of the Rebel Umbrella Group, the Free Syrian Army. Uh, General, thank you for joining us on Inside Syria. Let's tackle the situation with your headquarters supposedly overrun by Islamist groups and suggestions that you had fled, as it was put, to Turkey. What is the reality from your point of view? The reality uh, is that I am still uh, inside Syria and I came tomorrow morning uh, to do this interview with you and all the news uh, uh, which talks about uh, that I left the country and I went to the Gulf region are not true. I am still with my fighters inside Syria and uh, what happened in the northern of the country uh, in the last week uh, we are now, uh, and about what happened in the last week, we are now trying to solve uh, all problems. And uh, uh, my officers uh, can uh, now 
uh, work again in our uh, headquarter uh, and uh, what I can tell you is that uh, the region was unsafe was not safe in the last week because of uh, some uh, problems between uh, the groups uh, who are fighting against the regime uh, in the northern region of the country and now uh, uh, there are uh, a lot of discussion uh, to solve the problem and in the last three days uh, we got an agreement with all uh, to uh, go back again and fight together against the regime. Were your headquarters actually taken over? Were they was there battles there that forced you out? It is not taken uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, that is not true at all. That is just a lie. I don't know why the media, they are, they are behaving uh, so. It is not taken over. My headquarter uh, was and is still in uh, Bab al-Hawa region. And all uh, Syrians, they know where is it. And what happened is that one uh, protection battalion uh, of the SMC wa was attacked. And during the attack, uh, many groups came to protect the headquarter and to protect the warehouse and there was a kind of chaos because uh, of uh, the danger of uh, the attack and uh, uh, after that there was some problems between the uh, fighting uh, groups uh, in the region and that is exactly what happened my uh, headquarter was not taken over as it was said in the news and in the media and they uh, talked about uh, 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 many, many things which uh, not happened at all. So it wasn't uh, the, the media making this up, it was uh, the media reporting what the White House, among others, had said. So why would the United States, in this instance, be briefing against you? I don't know. I don't have evidences where the media get the news. Uh, uh, they can go today to Bab al Hawa and see uh, the headquarters, and it is uh, uh, really uh, ready. And we are not, uh, uh, my officers are not working there. We have another quarter, uh, headquarters inside the country who are working from that headquarters because the whole region near Bab al Hawa is not safe. That is, uh, that is the truth. Who, who likes to come and to see the truth? Uh, can come and visit us. But do you believe that the United States support I is waning? Because if it is saying things that you say are absolutely untrue, why would it be putting these things out if it had um, total belief in what you were doing? The American support was and is still uh, very important for the Syrian revolution. Uh, I don't know. Uh, exactly uh, uh, the uh, real reason uh, behind uh, freezing uh, the support for the uh, for a short period of time but uh, as I told you uh, the uh, uh, security and uh, uh, to move uh, the support safe in the northern region uh, it was not possible in the uh, last 10 days and I think that is the reason to freeze the uh, support for only a short period of time. Uh, the real reason that they say they've frozen this support is because they're worried about it falling into the wrong hands, um, which sort of states the fact that they don't believe you have control either over the region or the other rebel groups. Is that the case? What I can tell you uh, that uh, there are, uh, as I told, uh, there are uh, many checkpoints in the region and these checkpoints are for many, many different groups. And I was clear uh, to tell you that the region uh, was and still uh, today uh, not safe to move the support to the right hands. And uh, uh, I think it is important to wait just for a short period of time because we are working. We are uh, discussing the problem with the commander of the groups with all uh, uh, leaderships of the revolutionary forces in the region to solve the problem and uh, to come to an agreement so that uh, there is a general uh, united uh, revolutionary force uh, control the region in the north, control Bab al Hawa and the cross point in the uh, very close uh, region in Atmi. So how difficult is it, therefore, for you and the Free Syrian Army to continue your battle to topple the regime of Bashar al-Assad with the presence um, and increasing numbers of foreign fighters there who may have different uh, aims to you? 
The majority of the fighters in Syria are Syrians, and they are fighting to collapse the regime and to build a new uh, free and democratic Syria for all Syrians. And the foreigner fighters, uh, I think they have to leave uh, the country because we don't uh, need fighters. Just what we need is weapons and ammunition to be able to resist the forces of the regime and to collapse the regime. Do these foreign fighters that you say should leave the country, do they have the same goal as you, or do they have different plans? Now, I hope that they have the same, uh, uh, what we have in mind, to collapse the regime and to build a free and democratic Syria, but I'm afraid that many of them uh, have other goals. And that's why we uh, uh, like uh, to say and to tell them uh, we don't need foreigner fighters, uh, and who is coming to fight against Bashar regime uh, should make a statement uh, that must be very clear and say, after collapsing the regime, uh, uh, he will leave the country. Are you in a stronger position now or a weaker position than 12 months ago? Yeah, we can't uh, so uh, say that we are in a stronger or weaker position. We are in a better uh, position than uh, uh, from uh, 12 months ago uh, because uh, in this year we are now working under the umbrella of the SMC uh, since more than one year. In this year we built a, a very well organized uh, uh, free Syrian army uh, and uh, command of the fronts, command of the military councils, and we are cooperating with the uh, fighters uh, on the ground in uh, all around the country. We have a lot of problems. Uh, there is a lack in ammunition, there is a lack in weapons, especially uh, anti-aircraft and anti-tank weapons. There is a lack in food and uh, medical uh, equipment and medicine. Uh, but I think we are in a better position. You may be very well organized and in that sense in a better position, but you're no closer, it appears, to toppling the regime. Bashar al-Assad looks as entrenched as ever. As you know, uh, the regime uh, in Damascus is supported uh, uh, by the Hezbollah fighters, Iranian fighters and Iraqi fighters, and is supported from the Russian and uh, the regime is still receiving a huge uh, amount uh, and shipments of ammunition and the new weapons, new air jets. Uh, and uh, we in Syria, uh, we are sure that the uh, units of the regime, the, the regular Syrian army, is uh, not uh, today uh, capable to fight uh, uh, anymore. Uh, those who are fighting uh, to protect the regime are the Foreigner fighters from Lebanon, from Iraq, from Iran, and some of them are uh, mercenaries uh, from uh, many, many countries. Put the question to you again, General. It doesn't seem at all likely in the near future that Bashar al-Assad's regime will fall. So how dispirited in many ways are you and, and your fighters on the ground? Yes, we know that uh, the uh, fight uh, against the regime will continue for a long time. And uh, the fighters of the Free Syrian Army, they know that they have to fight for a long time uh, because there is no enough support. And uh, we think at the end of the day, we will uh, reach our main goal. And we are sure that Bashar uh, regime will be collapsed and that Syria will uh, see a new uh, 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 I think uh, in, the, in, in the future they will see uh, a new regime who, who should be, uh, which should be democratic uh, and uh, support freedom. Why do you believe the West isn't giving you the kind of support that it was giving you two years ago? The, as, as you know, uh, there are many, many uh, problems uh, for uh, the uh, Western country to support us with uh, weapons and ammunition because uh, the laws there uh, preventing uh, them to support us with weapons and ammunition. Uh, we discussed uh, this issue with uh, many uh, Western countries. Uh, and uh, what we know uh, is uh, that they can support us with uh, non-lethal materials. 
Uh, we are thankful for this kind of support. We urge them uh, to support us with weapons and ammunition uh, because we are in most need for the, this kind of support. And uh, we appreciate all kinds of, of support from the Western countries. Could it be that they're not supporting you because they don't believe you're going to win? No, I don't think so. We are going to win uh, if they support us or, uh, and if they uh, don't support with weapons and ammunition because uh, the uh, people in Syria, they decided uh, to go to the end in this fight against the dictatorship regime, against a president who gave order to, uh, uh, to, to use SCUD missiles and chemical materials against his own uh, citizens. And uh, we will not stop fighting. And we will find uh, weapons and ammunition. Uh, we know that uh, uh, what we find here and what we get uh, is not enough. But we think uh, with the weapons and ammunition which we have, we can uh, continue. Uh, that will uh, uh, take a very long time. But we uh, are sure that we will collapse the regime and we will uh, be free at the end. Let, let's talk about the, the weaponry that you have or, or don't have, General. Are you only able to get extra supplies now by capturing them from regime forces, or do you still have a flow of ordnance coming in from outside? What we are uh, becoming from outside is very little, uh, and we uh, now focus on uh, sizing uh, weapons and ammunition uh, from the units of the regime. And uh, as you know, the fighters uh, uh, in Al-Kalamon region, they uh, sized uh, what's so-called strategic uh, warehouse in Mheen. And they sized uh, many, many other warehouses uh, of weapons and ammunition. And we uh, uh, urge our fighters uh, to size weapons and ammunition from the units of the regime, from uh, Hezbollah fighters and from other fighters who are supporting the regime. What is going to be your position in the new year at the peace talks in Geneva? About the peace talks uh, in Geneva, um, I can tell you uh, that uh, the fighters on the ground, uh, they support uh, uh, political, uh, the political solution, but under uh, very uh, accurate conditions. Uh, and uh, if these uh, conditions uh, are uh, fulfilled, uh, um, uh, let us say, if they have uh, a green uh, light that uh, these conditions uh, will be uh, uh, taken into consideration, uh, they support the political solution. But who will go to Geneva? Uh, I don't know exactly now if uh, it is uh, fixed that the national coalition will go or uh, if they took the decision to go or not to go. I don't have any uh, new information about that. Yesterday, uh, I saw in the news uh, that they delayed the la their last decision uh, to participate uh, in the Geneva conference. Uh, talking on behalf of, of your troops, the Free Syrian Army, and, and from a personal point of view, General, would you be at all prepared ever to see a negotiated settlement with Assad still in power? No, uh, never. Uh, we don't uh, like to see uh, Bashar al-Assad in any kind of negotiation. And uh, we uh, do think that uh, he should not have any role in the future of the country. I want to we ask we, you. We, we, we not, uh, we, we don't. Yes, please. I, I'm very sorry. I, I stopped you in the middle of something. Uh, please continue. Uh, we don't uh, accept Bashar al-Assad at all, uh, and uh, for the fighters on the ground, and I think for all Syrian uh, citizens, it, uh, Bashar is not uh, acceptable anymore. But in terms of the, the civilian casualties, uh, the number of refugees, the number of uh, women and children who are losing their lives, might it not be better to come to some kind of deal, however unpalatable that may be, but simply to spare these people from further suffering? Yes, uh, in the Free Syrian Army, we support uh, the political solution. But uh, uh, as uh, all our citizens know, uh, the regime is still uh, uh, still have the same uh, meaning about Geneva. The uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs said in his last statement that they are not going to Geneva uh, to uh, 
negotiate about uh, leaving the power in Damascus. They are going to negotiate about uh, the terrorism in Syria. Uh, we do believe that uh, the terrorism in Syria uh, has only a main reason, and that is Bashar uh, and his army uh, who are killing the people and uh, destroying the country. If they are uh, really coming uh, to uh, have a solution for the Syrian problem, uh, I think the others will be ready to uh, talk, uh, to stop uh, bloodshed, to stop killing, and to stop destruction, but only under one condition. Bashar and his family and his regime, they shouldn't have any role in the future of the country. Otherwise, uh, we are forced to uh, fight again and again. But then we come to the other enemy. I want to ask you about when the revolution began, uh, when you decided to, to join the opposition, when you defected. Could you ever have imagined that you would not only be fighting the Assad regime, but that the war would be fought on so many different fronts against extremist groups? Those rebel fighters, you say, have no place inside Syria. Did you ever imagine it could become so messy? No, no, uh, really, uh, uh, I can say when I defected from the army and joined the uh, revolution, I didn't imagine that I will fight uh, against any uh, other uh, forces. I thought that we uh, are going to fight against Bashar and his army and his units who are killing our people. I didn't think that uh, there are other kinds uh, of units who will come and uh, deceive us to say that they are fighting against the regime. But in reality, they are supporting the regime. They are working under the control of the regime. The leadership of these uh, groups are under the control of the Iranian regime, and they receive support from the Iranian regime. And we have many evidences that, that they are cooperating with the regime. Those groups are very dangerous for us all in Syria and for the future of my country. And I would like to tell my citizens and my fighters to be very careful. Uh, uh, they are deceived from uh, the media of these kinds of groups uh, who are saying that they are Muslims and they are coming to Syria to help Muslims. I think uh, we in Syria understand uh, the moderate Islam better than all other Muslims in the world. And we don't uh, need uh, any help of foreigner fighters. Uh, we have um, enough fighters. We have very brave fighters. What we need is just support. Uh, uh, we need weapons, ammunition, financial support, and other kinds of support. But, but, but let, let me ask you, uh, General, uh, let me ask fighters. you this. Um, which is the bigger enemy now? The Islamist fighters, those you say are supported by Iran, those that, that have made your task that much more difficult, or the Assad regime, which is the bigger enemy? They are frankly, the bigger enemy for the Syrian citizens is still, uh, is still uh, uh, the regime in Damascus, because when we collapse the regime in Damascus, all other groups will leave the country. I think they are coming, they came to support Bashar regime. and. Uh, Anything uh, what they are saying uh, different from uh, this uh, truth is not true. And I would like uh, to say, let us focus uh, on uh, collapsing the regime, on fighting against the regime. And I think when we get right from uh, the regime, the other groups will leave the country. General, final question and short answer, if, if you would. You say it'll be a long fight. Could it be many more years? It could be. I'm sorry to say it could be for many, many more years. Uh, General, we thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us on Inside Syria. Uh, General Salim Idris, head of the Free Syrian, Syrian Army, thank you for talking to us. Well, thank you very much indeed for talking to Inside Syria. That's my guest today, General Idris, the military chief of the Free Syrian Army. And that is it. For today, thank you for joining us and do remember Al Jazeera has extensive and continuing coverage of what's happening inside Syria, not just on this program but with our hourly news programs and of course online at aljazeera.com. Thank you for watching Inside Syria from me, David Foster and the rest of the team. Goodbye for now.